620,000 dead. 75 billion dollars spent. Abraham Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. A primer on the American Civil War. Presented by Mr. Review. No fancy words, no fancy suits. Plain talk about issues you need to know. Just in time. The Civil War began with the firing at Fort Sumter on April 12th, 1861. But certainly, one must ask, what caused the American Civil War? Let's review the causes of the American Civil War. And how shall we do that? Tukaba, pu 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 hmm. Did you say tukaba? Puh, puh, puh. Hmm? Let's look at the causes of the American Civil War. The T. T stands for technology. The cotton gin. An innovative machine intended to abolish slavery. But Eli Whitney's innovative machine actually made slavery more profitable. The need for more land and slaveholders pushed further west to plant more and more cotton. Technology. The C. Court case. Of course, we're thinking of the case Dred Scott in 1857, when the United States Supreme Court ruled that the former slave Dred Scott, who had moved to Illinois, had no standing in court. Why? Because African Americans were not people. This caused great fury in the North. Court case. The B stands for book, and how books can stir people's hearts and minds. The book that stirred the American Civil War was Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, a book that portrayed the cruelty of slavery in the South. For many Northerners, this is the first chance they had had to review the terrible conditions of Southern slavery. When Abraham Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe during the American Civil War, he was said to have uttered these words, So you are the little woman who wrote the book that started this great war. Book. The Civil War was also caused by certain personalities, and no bigger personality than John Brown, who led a number of vigilante invasions into slaveholding states bringing his own personal justice. It was Brown who said, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. He was right. Personalities. Let's not forget politics. When Abraham Lincoln won the election of 1860, this divided the country clearly into a northern region that voted for Lincoln and a southern region who voted for somebody else. Politics. Philosophy. There was a philosophy in the South, a philosophy of states' rights. The southern states felt more powerful than the national government as a whole. This is called nullification. The states felt it was in their power to nullify or to not obey national laws. This philosophy pushed the South more and more towards secession. Limit the power of the national government, or else. But most importantly, the greatest single cause of the Civil War was a moral impulse. A moral impulse against slavery. 
Slavery was the ultimate cause of the American Civil War. Let's take a look at the American Civil War as it started. Initially, 11 southern states seceded from the Union, just after Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860. But notice on the map, there were four slave states that chose not to secede. These are called border states. You should know them. Missouri, Kentucky, Delaware, and Maryland. Later, they would be joined by West Virginia, a section of Old Virginia that seceded from the seceded state of Virginia. These states are called border states, slaveholding states that stayed in the Union. The fighting did, in fact, begin at Fort Sumter on April 12, 1861. And Abraham Lincoln became the commander-in-chief, overseeing this first war between the states. He made it quite clear what his intention was. My paramount object in this struggle is to save the Union, and is not either to save or destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. Abraham Lincoln was not a pure abolitionist. He simply wanted to keep the Union together but to prevent slavery from moving further west. The line was drawn in the sand. The North thought and hoped the conflict would end quickly. Their initial plan was called the Anaconda Plan, blockade the South, make it virtually impossible for Southerners to trade with European countries, choke them, an Anaconda Plan. The South had other ideas, the war dragged on, in part because the South was fighting a defensive war, a war of attrition, wear down the opponent, force the North to grow tired of the fight. There were certain advantages held by both sides. The North held a 71% advantage in population. The North had 60% of all livestock. 75% of farm acreage, 97% of firearm production, 93% of textile production, 94% of iron production. The South, on the other hand, had the single greatest military generals in the Union. The South had home field advantage, knowing the battlefields, and of course, their defensive strategy the North was obligated to defeat the South. The South merely had to hang on. But was there anything else? What would ultimately be the cause of the single greatest advantage? Abraham Lincoln put it best. Let us have faith that right makes might. The righteous cause of slavery in the end, at least it was hoped, would tip the balance in favor of the Union. The South, of course, had their ace in the hole, or so they thought. Cotton was king. England and the rest of Europe so badly needed Southern cotton. This is where Lincoln's political genius was shown best. In January 1st of 1863, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, dramatically changing the focus of the war. It was significant for these reasons. One, it freed only slaves in Confederate-held lands. No slaves in the border states yet were free. Two, it kept England out of the war. England had abolished slavery years earlier, and could not continue trading with a slave-holding confederacy now that the war was clearly fought over the issue of slavery. War to preserve Union was now about slavery. Northern soldiers now had a clear cause. 
the Emancipation Proclamation could have been the most significant battlefield decision that Lincoln made. Let's look at a couple of key battles that turned the tide. The Battle of Vicksburg in July of 1863. Ulysses S. Grant's army wins control of the mighty Mississippi, controlling trade in the West. Of course, the Battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. General Lee's Confederate army forced to retreat after their mistaken invasion of the North. The tide begins to turn in the summer of 1863. This long, hard battle between the states was coming to an end. The last straw was William Tecumseh Sherman's march to the sea in the fall of 1864. He brought total war to the South. Break your opponent's will to fight by destroying civilian targets. The South had had enough. Sherman said, War is cruelty. There is no use trying to reform it. The crueler it is, the sooner it will be over. Ulysses S. Grant receives General Lee's surrender in April 9, 1865. Meeting at the Appomattox Courthouse, following the instructions of Lincoln, with malice to none and charity for all. The Civil War is over. 620,000 dead. The American Civil War between the North and the South. But how do we build? South may have surrendered and the North may have won the war, but could they win the peace? This critical question has been called the Reconstruction. Many feel we are still reconstructing. The American Civil War. The American Civil War, a primer, presented by Mr. Review. No fancy words, no fancy suits, plain talk about issues you need to know. Just in time.